Season's greetings to you and your family this morning. A very Merry Christmas from our family to yours. Welcome to Calvary Christian Church in Pretoria East, a church you can call home. Gather your family, gather friends, and give thanks to the Lord for the great gift that has been born this morning. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, and the reason for the season. We are a church that believes in the big E's, and our vision goes as follows. We exalt Christ, we evangelize the lost, we encourage the hurting, we enrich the community, and we equip the saints. Our mission, transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless, training leaders, and equipping saints to the building of the church where Christ is Lord. If you're joining us for the very first time, we welcome you on our special Christmas edition. There is a link provided below for you to click on and further connect with our church. Get to know us further, but get to know Jesus as we worship him and give him the praise that is due to his name this morning. May you enjoy this day, may you enjoy the service, and may you give him the worship that he deserves, for he is the reason for us. Christmas to me means family, cousins, sisters, brothers, grandmas, aunts, and the annoying uncles. It means spending time with the people you love and your friends and all the people you used to be with in high school. It means eating a whole pig and a whole sheep and half of a cow. And how I'd usually celebrate Christmas is with family, a church, singing hymns, and just praising the Lord and thanking God for the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, what does Christmas mean to me? It's just simply about a time when we spend with family, the time when in we get to be with people that we were not with uh, throughout the whole um, year. Because you know, with because of work and school, we get so dispersed. Other people are in different provinces, so we get time to spend with family. And you know, we eat you know seven colors kind of food. And um, other than that, we also take the time as Christians to also just remember the day wherein Jesus Christ was born, and then um, who was the one actually who died for our sins and became our Lord um, and Savior. So that's just a um, summary of how I view um, Christmas. Um, Christmas to me is a sacred time where um, I get to see all those people that I didn't see for the whole year. A lot of food, meat, yeah, all those food you don't eat during the year. And um, I, I celebrate Christmas, oh, uh, I celebrate Christmas at home um, with my family. Um, we have a mini service. Yeah. Christmas to me is family time. Getting to be with family and meeting uh, people you haven't seen in a long time. People uh, that you don't see throughout the year, you get a chance to meet them in Christmas. And uh, celebrating, we usually have functions, family functions, so we go out on a trip just to get that bond again, you know. It's a time we get to see each other again. That's what Christmas means to me. So, um, to me, Christmas means um, we're coming together with family. Um, this special food that is cooked on Christmas um, at my house. So back when I was a child, my mother would make a special juice and she would make um, a special pudding and she would bake a special cake and we knew that those things were only eaten on Christmas. 
So Christmas um, was those foods to me when I was younger. Um, it also meant um, that we as a family would sit down and and um, have prayer together and um, remember Christ, um, not only as a baby, but also as a savior. Uh, we would sit together and, uh, and eat together and pray together. But most of all, we used to play this game with everyone in, in the family um, at our house where we would inflate a balloon and would have like two teams and right in the sitting room the the one team would sit on the other side the other team would sit on the other side and we would play th that balloon like it was a uh, what do you call this a volleyball yeah and it was so nice it was so nice um that's when we had christmas at my house yeah.
Precious Father, we come before your presence this morning and we want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your mercies and for your grace that are from everlasting to everlasting. And Lord Father, we come before you and we come to adore and worship who you are and give glory and honor unto you. For you are faithful, for you are good, and you are kind, for you are merciful, and there is none that is like you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you are good, that you are kind, and that, Lord God Almighty, there is none that reigns above you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Christmas celebration service this morning. I believe that wherever you are, wherever you are sitting at, the Lord is with you right there. And this morning marks the day where Christ was born and Christ came just for the saving of our lives and just to deliver us. And today we are blessed. We are empowered. We are strengthened because Christ is the reason for the season. We want to thank and appreciate the Connect team for welcoming us today. And what awesome messages we received as well concerning, uh, you know, what uh, uh, the Christmas day and what Christmas means to so many of us and to, uh, you know, many of the people around. And we want to appreciate everybody that took the moment to be part of that, this wonderful day. I don't want to take too much time this, this morning, but I want us to go to a familiar passage of scripture as we're going to share and just remind us the reason for this season as we adore Christ and as we worship him for who he is and for what he has done. The scripture according to uh, Matthew chapter number 2 and we're going to read verse number 1 to verse number 12. I want our, our team just to fly that, you know, fade me out and let me not be seen. But I want us to read together Matthew chapter number 2 verse number 1 to verse number 12. Quite a lengthy read but this is the crux of why we are here. And I just want to take some few lessons from the birth of Christ. Verse number one, the Bible reads, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together he inquired of them where christ was to be born so they said to him in bethlehem of judea for thus it is written by the prophet but you bethlehem in the land of judea are not the least among the rulers of judah for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people israel then herod when he had secretly called the wise men determined from them what time the star appeared and he sent them to bethlehem and said go and search carefully for the young child and when you have found him bring back word to me that i may come and worship him also verse number nine when they heard that the king rather when they heard the king they departed and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented gifts to him gold frankincense and myrrh verse number 12 then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to herod they departed for their own country another way we bless the reading of his word some lessons from the birth that we need to pick up of christ we realize that the bible teaches us and shows us that when christ was born the day that christ was to be born it is a star that is seen by the wise men that indicates that there is a king that has arrived now you've got to understand that anytime destiny precedes or destiny is about to be delivered sometimes there can be signs that show that destiny is about to be fulfilled now there are people that can be able to understand 
when destiny has arrived. I want you to pick, to pick that up with me. There are people that can understand when destiny has arrived. When they understand when destiny has arrived or when they understand that destiny has arrived, they don't just sit back and do nothing. But the scriptures show us that the wise men rose up from where they were and they moved to follow the star, to go and see this new king that is born. But the Bible says Herod the king heard it. Now I want us to understand that for every destiny there is a Herod that hears that destiny is coming. There is a Herod that hears that destiny is about to come. Now Jesus birth was not in the hands of Herod but Herod believed that his death was also in his hands. I want you to understand. There are people that when your destiny is about to be released, they can believe that they control that destiny. But I want to bring a word of encouragement to somebody. Let us take a leaf of learning from Jesus' birth that no matter what anybody else does, as long as the Lord has set me at this time, my destiny will be fulfilled. But the Bible says that the wise man says, where is he who has been born king of of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him why have they come all this way they had come to worship him now I want you to understand Jesus was not being made king because of the worship no 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 Jesus was not being made king because of the worship but he was actually worshiped because he was king <laughs> he was not ordained king he was born king and the wise men gave us the perfect and the clear understanding that jesus was born a king and today i want us to understand we are not making him king we are not lifting up lifting him up to make him king we are not looking at the world and 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 the world things we are making him king no he has been king he is still king and he remains king the reason why you have come the reason why he, he the wise men came they came to worship him now the question that i ask is when you come to jesus why have you come why have you come to him? Why have you made time to come to him? Some might have come for the fame. Some might have come for the money. Some might have come for the gold. But the wise men understood they came to worship him. When we come to Jesus, let us have the right reason. But I want to pick up a very important thing, uh, two important things, and then we go and pray today. Watch. When Herod the king heard this, the plan of Herod was to kill Jesus was to actually stop Jesus at the beginning of his destiny. Now, when Herod comes, we have got to understand that because he is not the predestinator, he cannot be the, determini the determining factor of my destiny. There are people around us that might be sitting around us thinking that the, our destiny is in their hands. But as much as Jesus came from the Father, the Father made sure he will protect him. And today as we stand today, we take this day to make this day an important day. It is us that make it valuable. The wise men traveled all the way from the east because what was happening was valuable to them. Today you got to take a moment and make sure that this day becomes valuable to you. And the reason when we started, when we had a chat this, this morning and we found out what does Christmas mean to some of the guys. For some it meant food. For some it meant a pig. You know, I was just such a dodgy thing hey eh? like a pig <laughs> for some it meant a lamb for some it meant several colors but i want to bring you to this the several colors the food the coming together is because of jesus it's got nothing to do with commercialization it's got nothing to do with anything else it's got everything to do with jesus and lastly the bible says when they arrived at where jesus was born they bowed down they opened up their treasure a treasure in our day and age might not be just about money, might not just be about expensive things, but might actually be about the heart. Today as we celebrate Jesus, as we celebrate his birth, you can start a new journey and open up your heart and open up the treasure called your heart that Jesus can come and reside, that Jesus can be worshipped inside there, that Jesus can be experienced in that exact and particular place. And as we wrap up this morning, as we encourage you to take the moment and take these few lessons from the birth of Jesus, the most important thing I want you to carry is, does he reside in your heart?
Do you have him in your heart? Does he dwell in your heart? Is Jesus dwelling in your heart? And as we pray this morning, as we have lifted him up, as we have said that he is God, as we have said that he is king, as we have come to adore him, as we have come to say that Jesus Christ is Lord, open your heart and make him a resident of your heart. Make him a resident of your life. Make him dwell in your life. And as we come and we adore him, join us and make sure that you are adoring the one that you know, the one that dwells in your heart. Let us worship him. Let us lift him up because he is already king. He remains king. He is still going to be king. He is the king of kings. For unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. This morning as we pray, I want you to remember that Christ is the reason for the season. He is the one that made this season exist. And as you go throughout the festivities of the day, as you meet friends, as you meet everybody, remind them that Jesus is the core. Father, we want to thank you for the birth of Christ. For without his birth, we would never have received the liberation that we have today. We would never have received the death that has liberated us. And Father, we pray that mighty God, our hearts worship him. Our hearts, oh God, Father, give praise, glory, and honor unto him. And this morning, let everything that we do be centered around Christ. Let it be Christ-centered more than anything. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we give honor and glory unto you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a beautiful and a great Christmas. And always remember that the reason of this season is Christ. And all you can do is just adore him and worship him. As we wrap up service this morning, remind, we'll be reminded tomorrow, 26th of uh, December, this year of 2020 is our, look at the 2021 is our last Sunday service online. On the 2nd of January, 2022, we are back here physically in the farm. And join us together. You see our banking details pop up right there. Offer your offering, celebrate the birth of Christ. And as we wrap up service, remind somebody why the season is. And the season is because of Christ. Merry Christmas to everybody. Christ be praised, be adored, and be given honor and glory. Have a beautiful day. What an Cheerio. awesome service we've had this afternoon. If you enjoyed the service with us, please do give us feedback on our WhatsApp comms line. Alternatively, DM us on any of our social media platforms. If you've given your life to Christ or are in need of prayer, kindly send a WhatsApp to our WhatsApp comms line. It's displayed on the screen. We enjoy testimonies too. So if you do have a testimony of what God has done in your life, kindly share with us on any of our social media platforms or send it directly to our WhatsApp comms line. See you on Sunday.